Welcome to an episode of Saturday Storytime with Kevin and Ty. Today we're excited to share with you a Toltec wisdom book, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. You may have heard of him. Um, this book is pretty popular in the realms of um, easy to pick up uh, Western kind of spiritual reads. So uh, Toltec, ancient Toltec wisdom. I'm not sure what Toltec is. I think it's like maybe like the Aztec, that kind of related. I could be totally wrong, but that's what I remember. So like the tennis book, it's about the four agreements and he kind of just kind of talks about these four almost like values or uh, passages or agreements um, to live by if you want us to live a, um, I guess, a good life, a meaningful, honest, an authentic life. So I'm just gonna jump in and I'm, I'm gonna read the second, a bit of the second agreement because I think it's something that I personally have struggled with and it's been a big challenge for me and a place of growth. And I can guarantee this is an area that uh, you may find um, interesting as well. So the second agreement, it is don't take anything personally. So, the next three agreements are really born from the first agreement. Okay, actually, let me, let me just read you. I'll just tell you what the four agreements are, and then I'll read a bit of the second agreement. So, the first agreement is be impeccable with your word. So, he kind of talks about how language is so powerful, so really be careful what you say. And, you know, with us being careful what we say, it also reflects the thoughts that we kind of have and the thoughts that we kind of engage with, and that keeps us stuck. So, if we can, in a way, purify our words that we speak, we are kind of purifying our thoughts as well, and kind of vice versa. The second agreement is don't take anything personally. The third agreement is don't make assumptions. Because making assumptions makes an ass out of you and me. So uh, try not to make assumptions. Be accepting and open and understanding instead. The fourth agreement, this one, is pretty positive. He ends his four agreements in a positive note. It's always do your best. So try, you know, what's the worst that you could think that could happen? You know, you might make, make a mistake, you might fail, but that's part of the learning. It's part of the game, baby. So the second group, don't take anything personally. Whatever happens around you, don't take it personally. Using an earlier example, if I see you on the street and I say, hey, you are stupid. Without knowing you, it's not about you, it's about me, right? It's funny because when I kind of said that to you looking on the camera, you might have felt that little trigger, that like, oh, oh, it might have hurt you. Um, but it's funny because it's never about you. That's why you never take anything personally because someone's saying something so hurtful, that person that's being so ill will and hateful, it's on them. And, and trust me, they're probably suffering in a way just as much as you are when you hear those words, but they're probably going through this constantly. Like their thoughts are just berating them constantly, day in and day out. If you take it personally, then perhaps you believe you are stupid. Maybe you think to yourself, how does he know? Is he clairvoyant? Or can everybody see how stupid I am? You take it personally because you agree with whatever was said. As soon as you agree, the poison goes through you and you are trapped in the dream of hell. What causes you to be trapped is what we call personal importance. Personal importance, or taking things personally, is the maximum expression of selfishness because we make the assumption that everything is about me interesting. So he is arguing that uh, we take things personally because we're actually very selfish and in a way we're very egocentric. So everything that happens around us is about me, 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 about me, me, me. So even though we're taking things personally and someone that could be what we call sensitive or anxious, it seems they're such a nice person, but in their heads, what's going on is they're actually like almost pretending to be nice and pretending and acting to fit in because, um, you know, they're insecure, insecure, but part of it too is that they might actually be a bit selfish and they kind of take things personally because they kind of see it, the lens of the world revolves around, around the I, the me. Uh, with the exception that everything is about me. During the period of our education or our domestication, we learn to take everything personally. We think we are responsible for everything. Me, 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 always me. It's interesting because um, 
when we're growing, we go through a phase. I think maybe we're around one or two. I think the terrible twos are called the terrible twos because it's during this phase of growth and development where our brains are developing, it's wiring. Uh, we also start to uh, gain that uh, diff the, the sense of a difference between I versus you. And it's called terrible twos because the kids, the, the toddler at the time are terrible because they're also learning what's the, what is the differentiate differentiation between I versus the outer world. So they're, they're, they, it's a very power struggle because they're trying to enforce their power and their autonomy into the world um, where they're still kind of learning, you know, trying to figure out the boundaries and, 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 and respect. So quite often we, we are almost kind of stuck in this phase psychologically. So even though we could be like, you know, grown ass men in our 30s and 40s, but we can have emotional IQs of like what we did when we're like, you know, like say seven, eight years old, we haven't grown past that. And we get triggered, we temper tantrum, we lose control. And if anything, that is the, um, that's not very manly. It's not very, I guess, uh, kind humanly. Or a wise humanly. So nothing other people do is because of you. It is because of themselves. All people live in their own dream and their own mind. They're in a completely different world from the one we live in. When we take something personally, we make the assumption that they know what is in our world and we try to impose our world on their world. Even when a situation seems so personal, even if others insult you directly, it has nothing to do with you. It never has anything to do with you. It's always about them. Always. What they say, what they do, and the opinions they give are according to the agreements they have in their own minds. So imagine someone saying these things doing these things, being so hurtful and hateful, it's because they agree in their own minds that these, this language, these thoughts, these patterns are okay. So you can only imagine the hell, the dream in hell or whatever, the hell in their own minds, what their mind's like. If someone gives you an opinion and say, hey, you look fat, don't take it personally because the truth is that this person is dealing with his or her, her own feelings, beliefs, and opinions. So this person can be thinking that they look fat or it might not necessarily be fat, but they're insecure with something about their body image and they're just throwing out shit because they don't want to deal with their own shit inside and to almost to be aware of their own shit inside and to grow and to transform and transmute that negativity into positive light. So they no longer spew this negativity outwards and they start to you know be more positive and friendly and loving inside. So it reflects of who they are on the outside and vice versa. That person tried to send poison to you. And if you take it personally, so this is when you do have responsibility though. You do have responsibility of whether if you decide to take things personally or not. In my head, uh, <laughs> this is kind of unrelated. I'm actually even been talking about this. But a song that's been stuck in my head is Take On Me. And, you know, to take on me, take on me, take me home. But like, that doesn't have to do with the lyrics or the words of the song at all, but it's just like, don't take shit on you. Never about you. Don't take things personally, okay? But take responsibility to not take things personally and to almost like do some window washer, Dr. <laughs> the doctor, master, um, Miyogi, oh, I forgot his name, Karate Kid, Master Miyogi, but like some, you know, wax on, wax off as people spew their poison onto you, but you don't take anything personally, you understand that they are suffering, this is about them, not about me. Taking things personally make you easy prey for these predators, the black magicians. They can hook you easily with one little comment or one little opinion and feed you whatever poison they want. And because you take it personally, you eat it up. And in a way they kind of feed off of it because they're just sharing poison and toxin. And they, you know, they almost like it, it, it affirms and reconfirms to them when you kind of obey and listen and agree with their shit that it's okay. And what their shit is normal. And they almost like, you know, it, it perpetrates that systemic um, negative doubting hate you eat all their emotional garbage and now it becomes your garbage. But if you do not take it personally, you are immune in the middle of hell. Immunity to poison in the middle of hell is the gift of this agreement. 
It is the gift of the second agreement. Don't think, don't take things personally. In the book of I, a, per, a practical guide to personal freedom, a Toltec wisdom book, the Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, and that's Don right there. What a lovely man! So thank you uh, for tuning in, for listening to another episode. Todd, I want to thank you for uh, watching for listening to the reads. These have all been books that have really touched us and really um, are a stepping stone and milestones and keystones of who we are as people. Uh, books are so powerful. It's like, you know, decades of wisdom and knowledge and personal experience of these authors condensed in a book. So we're essentially learning like, you know, decades of knowledge and experiences of Mr. Mr. Ruiz in, in a read. Like how cool is that? So thanks again for tuning in. We love you. Leave a like, leave a comment, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye now. Shake it. Shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it.